Leaky gut can cause leaky brain. So if your gut is on fire, your brain is on fire. This inflammation in the brain can make you brain fogged, depressed, unmotivated, attention deficit, fatigued, and forgetful. Now worse than that, it can lead to autoimmune attack of the brain, an eventual neurodegeneration that causes dementia, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Now in this video, you'll learn the gut-brain connection and how leaky gut leads to leaky blood-brain barrier that can wreak havoc on your brain health, your cognitive function, and your mood. You'll also learn the root causes of blood-brain barrier breach so that you can be aware and make changes. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Kahn, board-certified chiropractic neurologist and certified in functional medicine. Let me show you how to master your health. So start out with brain. This is a picture of brain facing that way. These are the blood vessels that supply the brain. And here's your gut, cut cross-section. These are the microvilli, the intestinal lining that help you with absorption. So when we look at the blood vessel, when we spread it out like this, this is your blood vessel with the blood going through it. And these are the epithelial cells of your blood vessel, the individual cell that lines up that makes your blood vessel. This is the blood-brain barrier. And the blood-brain barrier essentially is the blood vessel that supply blood to the brain. But it's still a barrier because it only lets certain things through. Well, your gut is the same thing as a barrier. You have these epithelial cells that lines the gut lining that kind of keep the fecal matters and bacterial content inside the gut so you can poop it out, but then let the nutrient through. Now you notice that these belt buckles, these are proteins called tight junction proteins. They hold these individual epithelial cells together in the gut lining as well as in the blood vessel lining that line the blood brain barrier. Now you notice the colors are the same. That means that they're the same tissue. It's the same tight junction proteins. It's occludins, cloudins, and zonulins that line the tight junction proteins here in the gut and in the brain. So because they're structurally similar, when there's damage to one tissue, your immune cell can react against the other one. So for example, here we have damage to these tight junction proteins right here due to various reasons like food reactions, gut infections, inflammation. These fragments of these intestinal tight junction protein will end up going through the lymph node, being presented to the T and B cells in the lymph node. That's called antigen presentation. And that's the job of the T and B cell to recognize this particular fragment and say, hey, is this friendly or is this foe? If it's friendly, then there's mechanisms that your immune system can develop tolerance and say, hey, I'm going to let it go. Or if it's a foe, then it can develop reactions to it. But in any case, even if it's friendly, your immune system might still develop some antibody because that's how your immune system performs housekeeping. It wants to clear up these cellular debris so there's no cellular debris floating around. So at any given point, when these ant antigens get presented to the T and B cells in your lymph node, what's going to come out is antibodies. In this case, it's going to be either uh, the cloudin antibody, zonulin, antibody or occludin antibody or actin antibody and these are all tight junction proteins and these tight junction protein when your immune system make antibody to them then what happens is this antibody can get, go through the bloodstream as it gets to the bloodstream it's going to recognize this tissue as being the same so your immune system might chew at it a little bit. And that can start to cause breakdown of this barrier. So now this blood-brain barrier becomes compromised. When this blood-brain barrier becomes compromised, you're gonna have some of these blood vessel protein here, blood-brain barrier protein fragment, that's also gonna flow through to the lymph node. And the TMB cell, if they pick it up and you start making antibody to it, then that's gonna be your blood brain barrier antibody. Now we can actually measure this on lab tests to tell us whether you have a lot of this antibody, which might indicate a lot of fragment, which means a lot of breakdown of the blood brain barrier. This is how we diagnose and assess whether someone has blood brain barrier permeability, or the other way we say that is called leaky brain because it's a leaky blood vessel that supply blood to the brain. Now, what's the problem with leaky brain? Well, if this blood vessel is busted like this, now I'm not talking about blood, busted blood vessel like a, a hemorrhage in your brain. I'm talking about on a cellular level. This is happening 
just within the cell, these tight junctions are breaking down. Know that your brain is called the immune privilege site. It's considered an immune privilege site because it is thought that the brain protects itself by having these very tight junctions so that things don't get through very easily. So only certain particle size of molecule can get through to the brain, like proteins and glucose and amino acids that can get into the brain to be used for fuel. And we're going to keep the bad stuff out, like toxins and various uh, infections. But if you have this blood-brain barrier breach or leaky blood-brain barrier, then what happens is things like toxins. Let's put it right here. Toxins or infections or even inflammatory cytokines. Messengers of the immune system that trigger inflammation, they can all get through to the brain. Remember, this is blood vessel, right? This is blood vessel that supply blood to the brain, like these guys. So now these things that normally doesn't get through this immune privilege site can get through. Once these things get through to the brain, it's gonna meet these immune cells in the brain called microglia. Microglia are resident macrophages within the brain. What that means is they're a specific type of white blood cell, similar to the white blood cell that's circulating in your body called macrophages. They're called macrophages because their job is to go eat up something. The microglia have long arms. Their job is to crawl around your brain to find either dead or injured neurons, brain cells, so they can get rid of the old and dead and injured neurons so we only have good ones left. The reason is because your brain is so mission critical to your function that it wants to use all the energy only to supply the healthy neurons and get rid of the, the dead weight, so to speak. But it's also its job is to get rid of toxins and infections by attacking it through phagocytosis. Now, so when the microglia meets these antigens or things that your immune system want to react to, it's gonna trigger what's called a microglial activation. Activation means these microglial cells get really excited and they also get primed. Primed means that they're ready for action, okay? And when the microglial gets activated, it's gonna basically start to triggering this cascade. What's well, gonna stimulate all the microglial cells to become activated. Kind of like a bunch of mouse traps in the attic, right? You throw a ping pong ball in there, and the ping pong ball set off one mouse trap, pop. It's gonna jump up and set off another mouse trap, pop, 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 pop. Next thing, all the mouse traps get set off. So this, this is called microglial activation. And when you get microglia that's really activated, they start chewing up things. They have a very good on switch, but they have a not very good off switch. The brake pedal doesn't work very good for these guys. So once they get turned on, they're just looking for things to eat up. And then when, when that happens, it can cause collateral damage. It may not have started looking for a neuron to target, it may have started with toxins infection, but now they get activated, they get all crazy, you may create collateral damage of your healthy neurons that you don't want to get rid of. So when the neurons get injured, neurons die. Then you lose function. This is why people get brain fog when they get blood-brain barrier breach and they get microglial activation because this turns into brain inflammation. Neuroinflammation. So microglial activation turns into neuroinflammation. And what, what neuroinflammation feels like is brain fog, is depression, is anxiety, is inability to concentrate. Okay? So you lose brain cells, you lose function. Now what happens is, now you can have little cell debris. These little tissue debris of neuron, these are called damps, right? Damage associated molecular pattern, tissue debris of the neuron. It's gonna travel through the bloodstream, go through this busted blood-brain barrier, get through the lymph node, and you guessed it, it's gonna potentially meet a T and B cell that may have a match for that particular tissue debris. If it does, then the T and B cell is going to make antibodies to brain, brain antibody, to that particular neuron. That brain antibody now can circulate back into the blood-brain barrier, get through here, 
And when you have brain antibody that meets microglia, you're gonna get microglial activation, which triggers more brain inflammation. And this process where the immune system started attacking brain antibody, this is called neuroautoimmunity. This is how you get autoimmune to brain. Things like MS, multiple sclerosis, things like neuromyelitis optica, various types of neurological autoimmune disease can be started this way because traditionally this is immune privileged site, which means that these antibodies that's formed in the lymph node shouldn't get through to the brain so that you don't react to your own brain tissue. But if you have a busted blood brain barrier, this can now happen. And now you can see this vicious cycle of more inflammation, causing more damage to neurons, causing more blood brain barrier breach, causing more reaction to self tissue. This is how blood brain, this is how you can start with gut, a gut problem that can lead to a brain problem. Now it can certainly go the other way. It can start in the brain with say a concussion or you smell something like a toxic chemical fume and that can trigger some type of microglial activation and that damage to the blood brain barrier can form these blood brain barrier proteins that can circulate to the lymph node. You create antibody to that blood brain barrier protein which looks just like the occluded zonulin in your gut barrier and that can start to cause leaky gut. Hence, we say when the gut is on fire, the brain is on fire. When the brain is on fire, the gut is going to be on fire. Now, let's take a look at what can cause this blood brain barrier breach. So you can get blood brain barrier breach from having high blood sugar. High blood sugar ends up forming advanced glycated end product, AGEs, and those are very inflammatory compounds. It's a type of damp, damage-associated molecular pattern, which means it's a chemical your body recognizes as being damaged, it's being a inflammation triggering event. With the high blood sugar, you're gonna have insulin surges. High insulin causing insulin resist resistance can also cause blood brain barrier breach. Alcohol can cause blood brain barrier breach. Leaky gut can cause blood brain barrier breach as we just talked about. Now, by the way, just talking about alcohol, this is, can be the reason why someone who's um, already have some type of injury to the brain that has blood brain barrier compromise and brain inflammation, if they drink alcohol, they may feel significantly worse. And in someone with blood brain barrier compromise, drinking alcohol may make, may make it very difficult for that person to heal the blood brain, blood brain barrier. Systemic inflammation. If you have whole body inflammation, these inflammatory cytokines can cross the blood-brain barrier and trigger more blood-brain barrier breach or initiate it. High cortisol. When you have inflammation, your body will pump out more cortisol. Elevated cortisol can thin out tissue. Elevated cortisol will thin out your gut lining and thin out your blood-brain barrier lining. That can cause blood-brain barrier breach. Chronic stress can also cause blood-brain barrier breach through inflammatory cytokines that can eat away at the blood-brain barrier, as well as by raising cortisol. When you're stressed, your body makes more cortisol, and that can also cause blood-brain barrier breach. Toxin overload, if you're exposed to a lot of environmental chemicals, that can create a problem. One of the ways that the toxins create problem is by creating oxidation, right? Toxins tend to oxidize tissue, and when you oxidize tissue, the oxidation damages the blood-brain barrier, which then creates the tissue debris that we see here. You can also have infections. Many different type of viruses and bacteria can, can travel through the bloodstream and breach the blood-brain barrier. This is why people can get meningitis. And this is also why things like herpes viruses can cross the blood-brain barrier, get into the brain, and cause a lot of issues. You can have elevated homocysteine. This is an amino acid your body naturally produce as a byproduct of making other things. It's part of the methylation chemical cycle. It's very useful, the methylation cycle, and your body naturally produce homocysteine, but you also have a way to get rid of it. If you're producing too much homocysteine due to some kind of internal stress and inflammation and infection, or you have some deficiency in getting rid of homocysteine, 
then the homocysteine level will build up. Homocysteine is a chemical that's very, very damaging to the blood vessel. It floats around your blood vessel and it just straight up busts the blood vessel, cause blood brain barrier breach. Traumatic brain injury. Obviously, if you hit your head, the, the injury of the head can cause blood vessel damage. But hitting your head, even if you don't have blood vessel damage, by hitting your head, you get the microglia to be activated. Because when you hit your head in a traumatic brain injury or concussion, you have brain cells that are injured. When you have brain cells that are injured, microglial's job is to eat up the damaged and injured brain cells. And that can cause microglial activation, which can create this inflammation. In fact, the symptom of concussion is actually neuroinflammation. And then antioxidant depletion. Any of these things, like traumatic brain injury, toxin overload, infections, chronic stress, can cause your body to become very oxidized, right? Can create oxidative stress. And that requires antioxidant to quench that oxidation, to protect your cells from damage. Your body naturally has antioxidant reserves, like glutathione, superoxide dismutase that produce uh, different enzymes that help you to quench these uh, oxidation but you can become depleted of them because if you're very inflamed and very oxidized, then you can run through these antioxidants where you don't have enough. So then now, now your tissue takes the hit rather than the antioxidant takes the hit. Now, all of these causes can cause blood-brain barrier breakdown, as we just mentioned. That blood-brain barrier breakdown will cause particles to get through the blood-brain barrier, right? Toxins, infections, inflammations, that normally doesn't get through this immune privilege site, but now it's able to get through. And that's gonna cause microglial activation, which causes brain inflammation or neuroinflammation. And that brain inflammation can lead to neurological autoimmunity, right? Because you're damaging neurons, causing damage associated with the molecular pattern or neuron debris to be presented to the immune system that can potentially make a brain antibody. And now you develop neurological autoimmunity which then, if you have neurological autoimmunity, you're gonna accelerate neurodegeneration, which means that you're gonna accelerate the rate at which your neurons die off. And the faster you lose neuron before it's time, the faster you're gonna lose function. And that's neurodegeneration, which means it's gonna accelerate the process of dementia, like Alzheimer, Parkinson, and various forms of dementia. So hopefully now you start to appreciate how important it is to maintain gut barrier integrity and blood-brain barrier integrity by looking at the underlying root cause and addressing the underlying root cause. And you do that by taking a complete detailed history, doing the right lab test, and then everyone will have a customized specific roadmap for them depending on what type of causes are there. Now, hope this helps you understand the connection between leaky gut and leaky blood-brain barrier and how this can promote chronic brain inflammation. Please let me know in the comments what's the one thing that you learned that was new to you. And if you found value in this video, please give this video a thumbs up and consider sharing it with those who need to hear this message. Please remember to subscribe to my channel to get more tips to master your health. God bless you and see you in the next video.